Today we're going to make a couple of these things. They're a blanking prism that's fitted to a particular kind of light when they want to stop the beams of light that come out from it from going in a, in a particular direction. They just put one of these in and they're appropriately known as a blanking prism. Two of them together there on a little base plate, mould half, a little bit of part in there, sweep the worst of it off the patterns. Set the patterns are roughly in about the right spot, more or less. It doesn't look too bad. First, put a bit of fine facing sand on. I don't even like to use much of this, it's very fine, it's hard to make, and it slowly clogs up the system sand anyway. Sit on lots of system sand. Stop it too hard sticking together. The risers, you'll notice you've got a little nail in them here. Obviously, they're cased with a little hole in the pattern, each of the patterns. If you don't do that, the, the risers tend to drift around all over the place. I don't need the facing sand on this side because the back of these castings gets completely lynched. Wobble these out and pull them, wobble them and loosen and pull them, but you mustn't wobble the uh, sprue. If you wobble them, it changes the shape of the sprue and you want to retain the, the, the nicely tapered shape that it has. That's quite important. It just makes them easier to clean later. Easy to blow all the loose sand out of later. There is work from the centre of the big holes. Kind of pouring basin. I like to cut them fairly deep. Yeah, that's it's offset. It's certainly not round like the funnel. The offset nature of it and its its uh, general shape is to help prevent the metal swirling and pulling air down, which it would do if it was a standing funnel. I'd like to put a vent down there, my sand's very fine and not very permeable, so that sort of vent helps a bit sometimes you need it. Take this one off. Cut the gate, which cut in the Half, top under the mold, or always cut from the hole inwards, not, not uh, the other way, otherwise you break the edge of the hole. Just smooth it up a little bit with a, this is just a soft brush, soft artist brush. here in the drag. Cut it well past the casting so the first metal that comes down the sprue goes past the casting. The idea here is the runner bar will fill up completely before the gates fill uh, and that seems to give you a 
bit of metal into your casting. And any metal damage, right? First, the first metal down the screw might be a bit damaged. That'll wind up around here. So let's got rid of that. Not in the casting. Loosen these two. Just a little bit. They don't do much. They're not that big. And lift. This is the easiest way to get these patterns out. And there they are. A little bit of power on there. Pick that up. Quick trial close of the mould to knock off any loose sand that might be sitting on edges of cavities or gates or whatever. Rather get rid of it now than find it in the casting later. And now thoroughly blow any loose grains up here. Nothing worse than having a nice casting made in a nice mould ruin by just being some loose hand in the mould and it's poured. Absolutely nothing worse. Be pretty good. Hope. One mould. Okay, all the moulds are made and they're now sitting on the stands that I'll, I'll pour them on. Again, I pour them up on a bench like that rather than grovel on the floor. I'm just too old to grovel down on the floor. The moulds are actually sitting in trays that, uh, in case the moulds leak, the trays will catch the metal and it won't splash on me or the floor. Now, the charge in the crucible is half new ingot. That's a third of, an, of a new ingot. Uh, I only use decent purchase metal. The alloy I use is, well, we call it 601 in Australia, but Americans call it 356. Um, it's heat treatable, and I will in fact heat treat these parts later. To aid feeding, strength, and to keep the grain size of the casting small, I add this, which is a master alloy containing 5% titanium and 1% boron. Uh, and it uh, refines the grain of the casting. And I add it in a ratio of about one part in 500. So that's about 10 grams going in there. I only need about five kilos to pour these castings. And so I'll only about half fill this pot, which will normally hold about 11 kilos. Okay, we'll leave it there until we light up. Lance. It's 
covered with a graphite sheath. This bubbles argon out the bottom of it into the aluminium. Sit back there and I'll give that about seven minutes. Heats up.